And something else that's wild to me is how sort of obtuse some members of this elitist political class really are. And that would include, say, well, Disney and ABC, and it would include the people that are making Star Wars, which apparently, like, it may not be happening anymore. I'll talk about that. And it would include a show that I hope you don't watch <laughs> that airs on late morning TV called The View. So Whoopi and her friends had someone on this week who is an author who's black and trying to encourage Americans to get away from identity politics that's all about race. Imagine that. So immediately, when you are a black man or woman, and you're actually talking up a narrative that is not hook, line, and sink or with the Democrat Party, you are persona non grata. This guy was persona non grata on The View when he dared, dared to challenge the narrative of this DEI woke nonsense that's being spoon fed to everyone. You got to apologize because you were born the way you were. He, he said, that we, we got to actually move forward, not back. And I want you to see the reaction. First question that I should ask you to, to, to do is explain to folks what you mean by this arguments for a colorblind America. What do you mean when you say that? So a lot of people equate colorblindness to I don't see race mm -hmm. or to pretending not to see race. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big mistake. We all see race, mm -hmm. right? And we're all capable of being racially biased, so we should all be self-aware to that possibility. My argument is not for that. My argument is that we should try our very best to treat people without regard to race, both in our personal lives and our public policy. Of course. And the reason I wrote this book, thank you. you can clap away. The reason I wrote this book is because in the past 10 years, it has be become very popular to, in the name of anti-racism, mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children and in general that says your race is everything. Right? And I think that is the wrong way to fight racism. And that's why I wrote this book at this time. Can I, I'm sorry, baby. Yeah. Can I just point out that <laughs> there is a reason for that? You know, it gets better. When I went to school, getting any information about anyone's race was not taught. No <coughs> history, there was no black history. None of those things were taught. And here in America, 100 years ago when I was a young woman, <laughs> That's how people saw you. That's how they judged you. So I think, it's, it, I don't want to say it's the, your youth, but I think you have a, a point, but I think you have to also take into consideration <laughs> what people have <laughs> lived being diplomatic. in order to understand why there has been such a... a, a in other words, you stupid kid, you don't know a damn thing racial things like women couldn't go to get into colleges if you are a black person there are a lot of colleges wouldn't accept you trying to equal the playing field i think that's what a lot of folks were have been trying to do i'm sure, sorry i didn't sure. mean to cut you off. i think that's your experience and, and that's valid you know as a counterpoint mm -hmm. when i was in fifth grade we all watched roots mm -hmm. together yeah in, in public school yeah so these fifth are different grade. experiences I, yes. I think it's also different generations mm -hmm. it's different parts of the country mm -hmm. right we have very different cultures all living together in one yes. country so i'm not going to deny that but i think i view this notion of a colorblind society similar to the idea of a peaceful society which is to say it's an ideal it's a north star mm -hmm. and the point is not that we're ever going to get there we're not going to touch it but we have to know when we're going forward and when we're going backwards and we're going backwards when we're doing woke kindergarten in san francisco uh, you know with with you didn't hear about this story no oh, you know <laughs> but wait, 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 wait yeah, because yeah, i want to get to they, the part yeah, of the book yeah, okay, you actually you yeah. believe that public policies that address socioeconomic can we fast forward do just a benefit. little bit to sunny because she just loses it on the guy and here we go okay so she she starts questioning him and this i want you to see poverty as the thing to be addressed that, that part is true but <clears throat> As you are a student of Dr. King, I'm not only a student of Dr. King, I know his daughter, Bernice, right? Mm. So I, I'm, I'm gonna get to my question. Go ahead, go right ahead. Um, 
I think the premise is fundamentally flawed. You, you claim that colorblindness was the goal of the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. based upon Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, you know, content of character versus the um, color of skin. <laughs> Bernice, Dr. King's daughter, points out that four years after giving that speech, actually, um, Dr. King also said this. A society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for Negroes. He also said in 1968, it was about less than a week before he was assassinated, this country never stops to realize that they owe a people kept in slavery for 244 years. So rather than class, he did write about that earlier on, right before his death, he made the argument for racial equality and racial reparations. And so your argument for colorblindness, I think, is something that the right has co-opted. And so many in the black community, if I'm being honest with you, because I want to be, believe that you are being used as a pawn by the right and that you're a it charlatan is. of sorts. He's, he's not a Republican. Well, so how do you... Who, who, he's who never voted well, you, for you, a you, you, you've said that you're a conservative. No, you, you, no. No, you did. You actually said that uh, <coughs> in the podcast that you did two weeks ago. I said I was a conservative. He's not a, yes, he's not, yes, you did. So, but my question, to you, my question to you is, how do you respond okay. to those critics? Okay, let's, let's give it a let's okay, so let him answer. Uh, yes, first thing I want to... I think it's very important. The quote that you just pointed out about doing something special for the Negro. That's yes. from the book, Why We Can't Wait, that I, that I just mentioned. Yes. A couple paragraphs later, he lays out exactly what that something special was, yes. and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based po uh, policy. But he also says okay. you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't. He says right, he I'm not going to torture you okay, with well, the entire go, thing. Everyone should go read the book. <laughs> but you get the point. It's like a guy goes on there and actually makes sense, is actually trying to bring everybody together and say, hey, let's like quit being so arcane about stuff. Like we've worked through a lot, like let's celebrate that and move on to the future. And everybody wants to cling to the past. Why? Politics. Politics. And they're going to do more and more of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Barack Obama was the master of this. And he's in Joe Biden's ear. There was another piece of the New York Times just the other day. He's talking to him. He's advising him. Double down, double down on identity politics. You know, you're never going to get ahead in life if the white man's keeping you down. And that's what you're going to hear over and over and over again. So I just want to warn you, but what that's amazing about it is that they're now terrified because black America is looking at the life they got thanks to Bidenomics and saying, you know what? Trump was better. And that is why Joe Biden is down 20 points, 20 points in the polls with African Americans. Because you know what? I'm sorry, this guy's right. Sonny's wrong, Whoopi's wrong. I, I watched Roots in fifth grade too. Okay, so maybe I'm a different generation. I'm the generation that doesn't sit there and think, okay, I can't do this because I'm a woman. I don't sit there and think I can't do anything because I grew up in a small town in New Hampshire, very sheltered little place, a dirt road, blah, 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 and I'm a girl. I never thought that. And that guy doesn't think because he's black that he can't do something. And yet they're all out there trying to pretend like if you're female, if you're black, if you're trans, if you're gay, if you're this, if you're that, if you're this, or you, that you can't get ahead in America. That's not the country we live in. We've been through a struggle for a reason. We've come out the other end and we have succeeded in a masterful way. It's exciting. It's who we are.